Hello everyone, this is Darwell 20, and welcome to episode 93 of Darwell 20's Let's Play series. Uh, where today I'm getting ready to make more iron keys. I've got a bunch of imbued slates. I'm turning the lights on in there because no more mob spawns for me right now. Let's throw our common Tartic gem in here. And this should make the iron keys that I need. Basically, I want to try out some more of these dungeons that we can find uh, in, in, in that dungeon dimension from Blood Magic. Then in addition to that, I want to get into the saturated Tau, because that looks like it's going to be a little tricky to automate. Uh, we'll definitely, you know, come up with something and figure it out, but it's just going to be not simple and straightforward, if you know what I mean. So now I've got uh, four of those keys that I left in here, didn't I? Yup. And we're ready to pop back into that dimension. So let's do it. I just want to explore these rooms a little bit to see what else is in here. Like, I'm not entirely sure how this works out, right? Uh, we got the saturated towel, though, because that's that's the important bit. So does this just spider on endlessly, or does it, like, once I clear out the four rooms here, we're done? Uh, now, remember, there is the advanced version of this ritual, which will apparently be a much bigger dungeon of some kind. Oh, hello, there's ritual stones in here. That's cool. Hello, friends. Is this a place for it? Okay, that's cool. Let's shut that down real quick, huh? Are they invisible? Okay, that was cool. Definitely cool. Uh, I got some Tau oil, which is nice. Uh, some more Tau fruit, which is good. Nothing particularly exciting in here. I didn't know there was an excavate enchant in this pack. That's kind of cool. Some more of this. All right, that works. All right, nice and organized, a lot cleaner looking. The more Tau fruit. Interesting, right clicking it, because I was right clicking just then. Uh, it does work, so that's cool. It almost looks like it completely removes it. It's just that ungrown Tau fruit is really tiny. It's interesting that there's rituals here, or at least ritual stones. I assume this is safe to go out into, right? Oh my goodness, look at that. I mean, I'll steal this ritual. This may be growth? I don't know. We can flip through the books and figure out what it was, but eh, I'd rather just steal the ritual stones, right? So what's down here? Interesting. I'm feeling like this might be uh, like another mods, you know, generated structure kind of deal. It's kind of cool. It's neat. That's neat. Okay. So again, this room looks like it has terminated, right? Like there's no other like lock and key things that we can get into. So my feeling is, Based on this so far, I'm going to say there's probably only a handful of rooms, like the four. And then the, the, the better dungeon, the deeper dungeon, is where we're going to have to go find other stuff. That would be my guess. Now, I'm curious what would happen if I made another ritual. Like, would it generate another one of these structures? Would it be the same dimension or a different dimension? I don't know. This might be like some kind of miner's room. Wasn't there something in here about a miner's room? Wasn't there something in the book about a miner's room? Hmm. 
now. Not really. Hmm. I knew there was something in here. That said something about deem of, you know, the foreman's key will allow entrance into the mines. Okay, so that might only exist in the deeper dungeon, which is fine. It's interesting how each of these rooms clearly has like some kind of theme to it, right? Like, this is definitely, like, a minor, you know, forge-type room. Uh, the other one was definitely, like, a, a room for, like, plants and growth. And then this room was, like, a library of sorts. Interesting that this weather skeleton spawner is just not spawning weather skeletons. Maybe because I lit it up too much? Mm. Oh, and this is, uh, this is definitely a nethery room. Cow fruit. I mean, it would be foolish not to take the gold, right? Blaze spawner. Thank you. More tau fruit, a demon well, living armor upgrade. Meh. Okay. A lot of crying obsidian, though. Which is not like particularly rare, but a little bit rare, isn't it? Rare enough that I haven't picked it up yet. Okay. So I guess that's everything in the mini dungeon. Am I right about that? Ooh, ancient debris. Not that that's particularly hard either, but still. Okay. We'll take it. Looks good. Healthy amount of quartz here as well. So I guess that's everything for the small dimension, right? But there is a bigger one that we can go to shortly that might be cool. All right, let me get my sleeping bag back and let me get my dagger back because I need to and we'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to hang on to my iron key because it seems smart to me to do so. Uh, I'll probably just throw it in here for now, though. Let's get into the Tau fruit, because that's what we're going to need to really progress. Um, after which I can be farmed, being a native denizen of the demon realm, its life cycle is unfortunately a tad more complex than that of the humble potato. Uh, will mature into one or two variants, depending on the conditions in which it was raised. By default, it will grow into Tau fruit, which is what we saw in the dungeon, right? We harvested a bunch of this stuff. And it, will be converted, it can be converted into Tau oil, which I guess does some stuff. Um, anointments and intermediate crafting fluid. Okay. Saturated towel, however, has an alternate and more challenging route of growth. Uh, if the plant matures while a mob, for example, a cow, uh, is standing atop it, it will leech health from the entity to satiate its dark hunger. In this way, saturated towel can be great. Let's check it out, shall we? Uh, I might for now, disable the killing of cows. Should we do that over here? Sure. I mean, cows were given as an example here, so we might as well. What? That was wild. I've never actually seen one just spawn right on top of me like that. That was cool, wasn't it? Um, I already cleaned out this chest, by the way. Uh, so that's kind of neat that there's you know this much in here again. Uh, so that's looking good. All right, now we're gonna definitely want some water. I assume that this saturated towel stuff needs water. And then we're gonna want a hoe, which we may or may not have one of in here somewhere. We do, that's cool. All right, so let's see what we can see. Uh, so do I have a mob imprisonment tool I can borrow real quick? Uh, maybe not an empty one. If I wait long enough, <clears throat> the drones will grow up, or the cows will grow up, and the 
and the drones that move him will come over here? Is that right? Or is that just the harvest drone? Eh, maybe the moving drone I took away. Which one is this? Uh, export entity, import entity, and this one is entity attack. So this one we probably want to keep running. He'll bring one over for me. Hey, thanks, buddy. All right. Now, I'm going to place this here, and does he have to, like, literally be standing on it, or what? what I'm not too sure about. Uh, now I could maybe watering can this thing, or bone meal it, maybe? I'm not sure. He might need to be standing, like, literally right on top of it. Omeal actually doesn't seem to do much. What happens if I move him to be right on top? I don't really see much. If the plant matures while a mob is standing atop it, it will leech health from the entity. So we have to get it to grow without bone meal. Did we have a watering can? Let's do that. What I'm going to do is let's water it first when the cow's nearby. Let's see if that's a thing. Oh, hey, that, that that's doing something. That's doing something. Yeah, define nearby. That's kind of cool. You know, we could make the uh, the blood magic-y thing that, that causes plants to grow, though I don't know if that uses growth ticks or bone mealing. So we're gonna have to investigate that. Oh, does that, do I count? Did you did you harm me? So look, it hurt, it hurt that cow that's way back there. So I don't think it has to be right on top of him. I think he just needs to be nearby. One of these days I'll come up with a list of which mods use growth ticks and which ones use bone mealing to grow their crops. I just know watering cans use growth picks. Can I upgrade this in any way? Not really. Wonder if I can augment him in the augment thing. I'm not sure. Hello. Maybe he needs to be... Maybe the cow needs to be closer. Because that grew really quick when I was standing right on it. Oh, well that didn't help. <laughs> what if we did this? You ready? Experiment here. How did you? Oh, probably. Now you can't get out of there, right? Okay, good. Now. Ah, that's funny. All right, Mr. Drone, you're done for now because you you need a break. Okay, put you away. Replant this. Now to watering can it. We did get some saturated cow, so that's enough to, well, close to enough, probably maybe enough, to get what we want. Yeah, see, that that definitely did a growth and then harmed the mod. I should try the, the blood magic eat one. Like I said, I'm not sure. Let's come back in a sec. This is working pretty good. Now you... There is a grow spell, but what if we turned this into a projectile?
Aha! How cool is that? I like that, right? Okay. Uh, let's come back in a minute. I will be right back. So this is interesting. It actually says in the book that the Sigil of the Green Grove, if you right-click, does bone meal. But if you activate it, applies a growth tick. So that should work, right? Let's do it. Uh, let's get ourselves a Sigil of the Green Grove. That guy is just a growth reagent, which is two saplings, sugar cane, and sugar. Okay, so two saplings, sugar cane, and sugar in the alchemy table. And then do I have my orb handy? There you are. Nice. All right, and then uh, which which we need reinforced slate, okay? And then the ashes. Which I think I stuck in here. Boop, boop, boop. Nice. Sigil of the Green Grove. Super cool. One of many sigils uh, in Blood Magic that mm, can use life points to do all kinds of cool stuff. All right. So I right click it to bind it to myself, current owner, Direwolf 20. Uh, and then it says, right-clicking will apply a bone meal effect, but look in the air and... Uh, it's shift right-click. Okay, cool. And that'll activate it. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Well, that's kind of cool. I'll take that. And that's using up LP, by the way, to cause that to happen. So now I can just sit here and keep this cow healed. And that should work, right? And we'll get, you know, lots and lots of saturated tau. Works for me. Not too shabby. Kind of cool, right? And this thing runs, like, really quickly, by the way. For for the record, it runs quite quickly. Now, that cow's probably going to die, but that's okay. I want to demonstrate um, how good this is. Oh, my goodness, we got bees again. It's because flowers showed up. How did flowers show up again? Somebody said if there's flowers nearby when the tree grows, it will cause the beehive thing to happen. But let's, uh, let's get, I can, uh, yeah, I should get rid of them. Uh, how about this? Excellent. Okay, cool. All right, you ready? Let's try it out here. Oh my goodness. I think it works. Central of the Green Grow is a really powerful one. It's, it's, it's really a good one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's a good one. All right, now that we've got our saturated Tau, we should be able to make if I'm not mistaken, at least, uh, my weak blood shard. We're going to need an alchemical reaction chamber, which needs two imbued slates. And an orb. Now, in addition to that, we need the sanguine reverter which is made in a Hellfire Forge. Shears, some kind of stone imbued in iron. Does that sound right? Shears, some kind of stone imbued and iron. There's your imbued. Cool, cool, nice. Uh, and for the record, that is a minimum 350 drained 30. Okay. So then we pop this dude. Um, I guess I'll pop him there. That's fine. Uh, this goes in there. This goes in here. What else do we need? Oh, um, nothing. 
We don't need nothing, because that's it. It's working. Sweet. Well, that's cool. I bet there's all kinds of neat stuff this thing can do. Yep, lots of things. But we got our weak blood shards, which is awesome, because it means we can now get our large bloodstone bricks, which is awesome, because it means we can now upgrade to a tier 4 altar. Uh, the bloodstone bricks, if I'm not mistaken, go here. And then we just need uh, 28 uh, more blank runes. Sure, you can use tough. 28. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then let's get a quickie exchange going. Okay. And now if we check this dude out, he should be a tier 4 altar. Nice! That's awesome. Uh, and then, if I want, I can upgrade to more um, better runes, right? So I can get some runes of sacrifice here, which I need a reinforce slate. So let's replace, like, I don't know, 14 of them? Does that sound, does that sound like a good time? And then we just need our orb back. That's the one thing. Blood magic has kind of always done that. Um, so we'll do like five at a time here. Oh, that's my capacity runes. Okay, five more. That works, right? So now I'm just curious. All right, let's let one mob over here and see what happens. Okay, so we're currently at 7,000. We are now at 9127. That's a pretty big boost. That is not bad at all. I might want to do just a few more of those. Plan. I don't know why you wouldn't. Right? And then we've got seven more runes that we can kind of do whatever we want with. I like that. All right. Uh, let's test that out now, right? So we're currently at 9745. And then we're just going to kill one mob as soon as it shows up. Nice! That is good times right there. That is not bad at all. Oh, I see what that inactive thing is now. Ah, okay, that's the current crafting progress. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. Uh, we actually now have access to a bunch of things because we got into tier 4, uh, including Dusk Runes. Uh, so we can take our Ritual Diviner, wherever I left him. Okay, you go away, you go away, and I think you can go in here for now, along with you, because I don't need that at the moment. You can go away, I'm just trying to keep my inventory a little bit cleaned up. Um, yeah, no, this is a huge... Like, look how much stuff we've got, it's so good. All right, um... We can now upgrade you. We're going to need two demonic slates, which I'll get the crafting ready for as soon as we fill up our current backlog of slates because, well, we don't have much slates. So I want to get up to 32 of each again. Uh, and then we'll get demonic slates. And then we can get dusk tool, which is uh, a block of coal. All right, that's not bad. Uh, we could probably get a couple blocks of coal. Get that cooking. If I'm quick enough. Or I could just wait until it's under 10. Which will apparently be a while. Because we have a lot of LP now. I wonder if I could throw some more speed runes in there. 
Might not be a terrible idea. Do that. We'll get like five of them. Or we could just get seven. Okay. That should make this a little bit faster. That's awesome. Okay, back in a few. So good. Alright, so let's take a look at Demonic Slates, right? Because that's one of the things we're going to want to get here. Uh, along with our two coal dudes. Uh, I, I changed my imbued slate value to 16, by the way. Uh, rather than 32 for the top tier because it just, you know, we don't need that quite, quite that much. Um, <clears throat> so this dude, the Demonic Slate, needs 15,000 LP uh, on top of the 8 that we need for the first one. So we should really not insert until we hit a lot, right? Um, we should really think about... Hmm. There's a couple ways we can handle this. Um, yeah. Because we could just boost this guy on the up. We could say, you know, 25, right? And that's the amount you need in order to insert now. So basically almost full. Um, and then you will get a demonic slate. Can I pull from here? I don't think so. How about we aim for like eight of them? Is that cool? So now he, once we hit the 25 that we need, which will be one more swing, coincidentally, totally by coincidence, I'm not even kidding. That would be cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust you to be demonic slates so you can pull in as many demonic slates as you can get and then you're going to get back to imbued. Uh, I only want you to have 16 of them. Got it? Cool. And that's how we'll play that. So now if I swing the sword, boop, we should get this guy in there. Okay. Now he's going to go up to tier 4. So tier 1, tier 2, Cool. And then tier three. I'm kind of watching it over on the left there. And then finally tier four, which needs 15,000 LP. It's pretty bananas. And then you should extract. Perfect. Chill out there. Oh boy, I hate when the solar fish happens. I don't know if I ever mentioned it on camera, but there's a reason that these blocks here are polished dark stone now rather than stone bricks. And it's silverfish related. I'm just saying. All right, so you're at 21. There we go, nice. Where's this other silverfish? He might still... Oh, he is still in there. <laughs> or they're still in there. Cool. And we got a couple demonic slates now. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, so I should be able to upgrade this guy to the next tier. The Dusk Ritual Diviner. And the reason that you want to do this is because rituals... Uh, there's two tiers of rituals. Um... Effectively, there is... Let's see. Let's go to Rituals. Um, the one that we just did, the Edge of the Hidden Realm, only uses the Tier 1 runes, Water, Fire, Earth, and Air. Uh, tier 4 Altar gives you access to a higher tier rune, which is Dusk runes. Anything with a Dusk rune, you either need the Dusk um, Inscription Tool or the Ritual Diviner with the Dusk upgrade on it. Um, and what that'll do is let you build higher tier runes. Well of Suffering, by the way... Might be something we get into pretty soon. All right, so it looks like now that we have access to tier four runes, we can go ahead and go to the Endless Realm. So Edge of the Hidden Realm is the dungeon we just went to. Pathway to the Endless Realm will lead to a better 
I guess, place. Um, I guess. We'll see. I'm not sure. I have no idea. This is well, this is the new content in Blood Magic. This is the stuff that's new to me. Uh, so we're definitely going to need to check out this ritual, which needs an activation cost of 150,000 LP, which means I should probably make my Tier 4 Blood Orb, uh, which is the Master Blood Orb. We just need a weak Blood Shard and 40,000 LP. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill this up with 30. Uh, take the stones out for a moment so that we can completely fill it up to 30. Pretty close. Wait for a few extra mobs and then be ready to boost it up to 10 more. Cool. Because you don't need to have all 40 in the altar when you start the craft, which is, you know, the cool part, right? So having a few mobs here, we'll start the craft in a moment once we have a few mobs. Then we'll go ahead and pop that weak blood shard in there and get the tier 4 blood orb, which I think can hold a million LP. Then I'll charge it up between episodes. We'll come back next time. We'll look into doing two things. One, I want to set up a well of suffering. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that. I have two options in my mind. Option one, place the well of suffering ritual below this current altar, probably squeezing it inside here. Okay. We probably have to move some of these things, but not a big deal. Okay. Once we put it in there, we could put our mob spawn in here. That's option one. Option two is we could put the, the, the ritual here and have the mobs, um, deposit their LP into a new altar that's underneath this one. And that will uh, then be transferred to this altar via uh, laser IO, fluid transfer pipes. Okay. Um, the downside of doing it that way is that transferring fluids from your blood altar, LP specifically. Oh, right. The lights are on because it's that makes perfect sense, isn't it? Um, let's do this. Let's do... So now I'm at 29,000. <laughs> I'm like, where are the mobs? Why are they not? Oh, right. They lights turn on when I don't. Yes. Okay. Let's just get a few of those. So um, it's very slow to transfer LP from your altar into tanks. However, you can speed that up with um, some runes. There are displacement runes, which will allow you to increase the flow rate of life essence into and out of the altar when pumping to and from an external tank. And then I think Acceleration Rune will also um, increase the speed at which Displacement Runes can operate. So we might want to look into doing those two things. Um, but do we have enough mobs there, you think? We might have enough mobs there, we think. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to call that good enough. So you start going. You're cool. Okay. That's got to be enough, right? One would hope. One would hope. Yes, hooray. And then bind it to myself. Boom. And now my uh, soul network, I think max is out at, um, let's see, I'm at 67,000. I think you can max out at a million now. So pretty cool. Uh, all right, let's come back next episode and check out the new dungeon and also uh, automate the creation of LP so I don't have to stand here doing this no more because that would be great. Uh, I think I might try the other way with the... because I usually do it where I put the mob farm right underneath the blood altar that I'm... I'm thinking to have multiple blood altars. That could be cool, right? That could be fun. I don't know. We'll see. For now, now with 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy. Oh, yeah.